A magical talisman, a historical back and forth between Europe and Africa and dance, music and storytelling from Bamako to Paris via London. Those are the elements that have gone into the mix for Le Vol du Boliche. The show returns to the Théâtre de Châtelet here in Paris. And to tell us more, I'm joined by its assistant director, Dossi Rugamba, and choreographer, Mamela Nyamza. Welcome to the show, both of you. Now, this show brings in a lot of historical, political, cultural themes, but let's start with the item from the title, the bully. This is a sacred object. It's used for special rituals in Mali, I believe. Can you tell us how the object informed your creative work on the show? Okay, um, thank you for having me and having us in the show. For me as a choreographer, I had to research about the bully. And I was told that the bolly is not something that women touch. But then um, the director, Abdul Rahman, um, with Dosa said to me, because we are telling a story, and within the bolly, there is the touch of the woman. So in the show, there is a scene of the ritual show of the, of the ritual scene where I become the soul of the bolly and also there's a woman because we are telling this story today metaphorically. So within the bolly, we actually represent it as something very sacred and something very spiritual and it's like you don't just touch it, which is why when um, Francois touches and the king becomes mad because nobody just touches the bolly. Even a woman is actually not allowed to, but in the show we did it metaphorically. As a choreographer, I had to create a movement that will show that um, how sacred the bolly is as a choreographer. I don't know with Jesse. Yes, um, but the stage direction about uh, a spiritual uh, object this like this, you, you have to find the way with the choreography, with the music, with all elements on stage, how to figure out how the spirituality uh, of this kind of object. And uh, we have different bodies on stage. And uh, for me, it was the first time just to see, uh, to know about uh, this uh, spirituality, about the body, it was interesting, yeah. And I should mention that the bully of this story, this object of this story, was one that was actually stolen. That's why it's called the theft of the bully uh, by Michel Leris, the French author, exactly. in 1931. Now, let's get an idea of how that works on stage. Let's take a look at the show. Here's Le Vol du Bully, or the theft of the bully. <laughs> Mamela, you mentioned Abderrahman Sisako. Uh, he w helped conceive of the performance, the Mauritanian director, with British musician Damon Alban. How did they pitch the project to both of you and what made you say yes? <laughs> well, for me, it came at a very difficult times in our um, world when we're dealing with the crisis, um, the COVID. I was actually at home and I got a call from um, Irene from Burkina Faso. He was actually asked to be a choreographer, but she could not do it and she could have commanded me. So Abdurrahman calls me, I think a month before I come to Paris. So everything was thrown into me so quickly because the choreographer before, before could not make it. So I jumped into the show with the last minute and I was reading everything on the plane, trying to create what I'm going to create for this scene and that scene. So everything came so quickly for me. And when I came, and I never worked with Abdurrahman or with Dossi, but we came together and we tried to create something that is this magical. And before... It was very quick, but I, I'm happy that we were given the second time. Because the second time around, I had a chance to look at the story when I was behind the scenes and just look at it from a, an, outside, an outside eye. And when we came back to, like now, we actually had more thoughts about it, how to recreate the work again. Mm. So when I actually came into the work, Abdurrahman knew nothing about me, but he Googled my work and he said to me, I think you'll be suitable for this because your work is also very, very political and very, um, and you, you know how to use bodies. And that's my job, to just actually create something with the body. And the body is one universal language that can speak many languages, either you're from Africa or Rwanda or Mali or Congo. We're all t telling one story that is African story. And that's how I got into the story. <laughs> Dossi, what about you? Was it an immediate yes? Yes, yeah, immediately, yes. Because I received the call from uh, Abderrahman. And, of course, I know uh, Abderrahman for a filmmaker, famous filmmaker. And uh, he wanted to work on this uh, production with a director from theatre. 
which is really uh, two different uh, disciplines. And I was really interested in, uh, to work with him about the story, this uh, story in uh, from Mali. He's from Mali too. And uh, me, I'm from Rwanda. It's uh, <laughs> far off from this story. But in the meantime, it's the story of Africa. Mm -hmm. I was interested in immediately. It was, uh, yes. No, <laughs> Now, if we have to categorise this show, which it's yeah. difficult to categorise, yeah. right. it is musical theatre, yeah. bringing in all sorts of different styles of performance, but it does deal with some dark elements, some issues like uh, the violence of the colonial period, the exploitation yeah. of people and resources. Now, Dulcie, I know you've worked with some very challenging material before, especially related to the Rwandan genocide. Yeah. How do you negotiate that sort of sensitive material on stage for a live audience? Yes, there is a uh, different chapters of of course, and uh, to talk about colonialism in Africa and uh, everywhere. To even from, I'm from Rwanda. She's from uh, South Africa, and uh, we have a very uh, violent uh, political history in our countries. And uh, here, yes, we try to just to to put on stage, but to find a way uh, all the time. Uh, not to make the audience comfortable, but to understand more than to hurt them, to understand history how, how, by which kind of way the, the world just uh, through a different uh, period of time and uh, to have a key, clear idea of what happened and uh, how, where from Africa is from and where he is now and uh, all the, the different uh, ways. And so, yes, it's a very hard thing to do. Mm. <laughs> you mentioned understanding there, because uh, singer Fatoumata Diawara is yeah. a star of this show, of the Vol de Boli. She plays various roles. And one song of hers that really struck me was about an ancient Mandinka document, yeah. which is a charter of equality, saying all human lives have equal worth. I found that really striking. And it just flags up how little we're taught or how little we know here in Europe about pre-colonial African societies. Did you make new discoveries while preparing this show? About the pre-colonial time, yes. I think Mali is a very uh, old society, an empire. And even in Africa, we all know about the uh, empire of Mali, about uh, Sundiata Keita, about the Charte du Mandé, who was uh, the first treaty of uh, human, uh, humanism. And it's, uh, yeah, I think we all relink it somehow to Mali. Mm. It was a multicultural process, though. I think there were musicians from the UK, France, Burkina Faso, Congo, Senegal. Yes. What did you take away from that collaboration? For me, it was so overwhelming to work with different people from different cultures, from Africa, even from the UK and Europe, because all together we actually came together to tell us stories with our bodies, with a literature, with um, writing, with movement, with music. Everything was just coming together in a way that I didn't think, which is why also there's a, we don't know how to call it because there's musical element. There's also the opera element within this, and that's where the culture mix in, because with also within our culture and our rituals, with all of this, it makes it so beautiful, so new, and so contemporary at the same time, even though we start from royalty and we go to globalization, and you see all of that throughout this, the story being tangled together, but we're telling a story that is so rich, mm. and not only talking about Africa, talking about the world. And that's all this world came together and tell this beautiful story, which is still in process. <laughs> now, yes. I did mention some of those darker themes uh, in the story, colonial exploitation, uh, this brutal approach to transactions and the theft of items right. like uh, Le Bully. Recently, the French government returned a number of uh, artworks to Benin after more than 100 years after they were uh, looted, more than 100 years. Do you think decisions like these are changing the dynamic between uh, Africa and, and the former colonizers in Europe? Yeah. Yes, yes. It's, a, it's, a, um, it's a necessity. Yes. There are, um, most of uh, culture patrimonial of, uh, outside the continent, in, uh, in Paris, in Berlin, in, uh, in Brussels, it is a very... Um, violent situation in itself mm. spirituality of yeah. africa uh, mm. is uh, now in the museum yeah. and uh, young people uh, are disconnected to their own history 
and we have to find a way to to reconcile the the, the people and the uh, and the uh, yeah. content center. This is a a good decision politically. Mm. Yeah, and also by telling it, we are edu we are actually being educational to everybody, educate edu edutainment mm. in a way. But we are also making the younger generation aware of what has happened before, so that it's like a story that is actually being educational to everybody about the history of Africa, how the Boli was taken from Mali to Europe. So everybody will know about it, and it's a story for everyone, the whole family. Mm, you know, okay. it's not violent. It's actually human. Yes. Indeed, our art and culture playing a very important role there. Mamila and Dorsey, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll leave you with some more from one of the stars of The Vol du Boli, Fatumata Diawara. This is her latest single, Yakandi. Remember, you can get more arts and culture on our website and our social media feeds as well. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. <laughs> They are the voices at the Conference of the Future of Europe, an unprecedented project in Strasbourg, gathering 800 citizens who want concrete action on climate, employment, healthcare, and even diplomacy. Questo perché vogliamo essere veramente una parte attiva di questo progetto democratico per far sì che questo evento abbia realmente successo e non sia solo un evento di facciata. Join us across Europe as we follow four women aged 16 to 22, all hoping to bring about change. I have this feeling like. Oh my God, we are doing here such a huge thing that's going to probably have a huge impact. I hope, I hope so. Don't miss Talking Europe on France 24 and France24.com.